Hi, Neil here with Sound Science, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about digital to analog converters. Now, a digital to analog converter is a device that goes between your digital source or digital sources and the analog input on your stereo. And before we can talk about the different kinds of DACs or quality of DACs, we need to talk about digital interfaces and the different types that you might find on your digital source. The most common is the SPDIF, which stands for Sony Philips Digital Interconnect Format, often referred to as Sony Philips Digital Interface. Now, SPDIF has these traits in common. It's a half a volt to a six tenths of a volt peak to peak, a minimum of two tenths of a volt, and it always travels on a 75 ohm cable. And the cable, as I've mentioned in other talks, is very important. Uh, in addition, TOSLINK, which is the optical digital interface, is the optical implementation of the Sony Philips digital interface. Next up in my favorite interface is the balanced AES-EBU uh, digital interface. This is commonly used in pro audio. You would find this at recording studios or for a live performance. Now, the, Sony, the AES-EBU digital output is between 5 volts and 7 volts peak to peak, and it travels over a balanced cable, which means that noise gets subtracted from it, and the AES-EBU is the most robust and best-sounding digital interface that I've found so far. Also in use today is USB, and the USB cables are offer a higher signal level than SPDIF, they're 2.7 volts approximately uh, peak to peak. There's a 5 volt power line which doesn't often get used in a DAC and, and ground. And the uh, characteristic impedance of a USB cable is 90 ohms. Now, in my own personal opinion, uh, I prefer DACs that have all of these inputs on them so that no matter what digital source you have, and, and that they undoubtedly will change as time goes by, you'll be able to interface anything to it. There are different performance levels, obviously, in DACs, just like any stereo component. Uh, in my experience, DACs which cost $1,500 and less can be good. Um, they all sound very similar. but lack a certain engagement, emotional engagement in the sound, what I like to refer to as smile factor. Uh, when you sit down and listen to digital music, if you're thinking about what's wrong with the sound or what's not right or if you think it's okay, well that's probably not what you want. What you want is a DAC that when you sit down and turn it on and start listening to music, it makes you smile. And that's what I call smile factor. I found that you can get that smile factor in DACs that are as inexpensive as $1,600, uh, getting a little bit better as you go on up to uh, $4,500 or more. Now the ultimate performance in a DAC would be a DAC that's got a digital clock input or a clock input. Uh, if your source has a clock input and your DAC has a clock input, and you have an external clock, and this is not inexpensive by any means, but this provides the ultimate performance because uh, an external clock clocking both your source, which could be your music server, and the DAC eliminates jitter completely. And this provides the highest performance level of anything you can find. So anyway, those are my thoughts on DACs. Uh, Hopefully it helps you understand where it goes, what goes on with it. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. Amplify the senses. Neil Vanberg.